Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the Trimble GNSS online planning tool. This tutorial is part of a three-part article which I have written which provides much of the background that is required to use this software. Uh, the article can be accessed using the link provided in the description of this video. It can however be watched independently as well. In this tutorial, I briefly introduce the Trimble GNS Online GPS Survey Planning Tool. Using this fantastic online software, you can plan your GPS surveys ahead of time by choosing optimal periods when you can expect dilution of precision errors to be at a minimum. Uh, th this software is extremely simple to use and can be accessed using your browser so all you have to do is to type this link. I have provided this link in the description of this um, video. And when you reach this site, uh, one of the first questions that you need to answer is whether you want to activate Silverlight. And so Silverlight is a plugin from Microsoft that is used for uh, um, creating online software. So the answer to this question will be yes and we can just simply click on activate silver light and the software is good to go so it's loading and there we are so before we can move forward um, we need to provide some values for the settings tab and these are the values so you have to provide the latitude and longitude of the place where you are planning to conduct your GPS survey. You can type in values here or you can just simply come here and click on pick and it shows you a map. You can zoom in to your map as I've already typed a coordinate before. Um, it's showing me my position and I am for example planning to do a wetland survey near the lake um, in Bhopal, India and so I have given these coordinates and I can actually move these coordinates so all I need to do is to just simply click and my position will be moved. So this is what uh, this is the area where I'm planning to conduct my survey so once I'm done I can just simply come back to settings and the new coordinates will be entered here uh, height is basically the height of the receiver from the ground so uh, we will leave that as it is. Cutoff is primarily the mask angle. Uh, we have discussed mask angle in part 3 of the article series. So um, um, this is ideally either 15 degrees or 10 degrees as required. Um, this is, we, we're going to come back to this obstructions button here in a second. But then this is the date on which you want to conduct your survey. So uh, say for example, if I wanted to conduct my survey somewhere on the 24th of February, I'm going to type that in or choose it from the calendar. Next is um, the time. So uh, this is the start time. The, the time that I feel uh, you know I can start my survey so this is a time that you can choose so 6 a.m. Uh, seems pretty fine for me that is the first available time that I can actually go out in the field and start my survey and then it's going to show me time in 12 hours or 6 hours interval so I'm going to choose 6 hours and then here you have to choose your time zone so as I am located in India I have and India has only one time zone so I have chosen the UTC plus uh, 530 hours Chennai, Kolkata, Mumbai, Delhi time zone so um, we are now all good to go except for this uh, button here 
So if you are conducting your GPS survey in an open field with no obstructions, then you don't need to use this button at all. You just provide your mask angle here, the one that you have set in your GPS instrument or you are planning to set in your GPS instrument uh, and you're good to go. But if suppose for example you're conducting a GPS survey in an area which is flanked by mountains or large obstacles to any one of the sides then you can actually use this button. Let's click it. So you see a sky plot. I've already explained how to read a sky plot in part 3 of my article. So you're standing here and these are circles of equal elevation. This is the horizon and this is north and this is the azimuth. So as you move from north, 90 degrees east, 180 degrees south, 270 degrees west. This blue ring here is the mask angle or cutoff and remember that on the settings page we have provided a cutoff or mask angle of 10 degrees. So any satellite which is below 10 degrees of elevation will actually not be used for positioning solutions. So what this software permits you to do is that if you are aware of any obstructions in any direction uh, at the place where you are planning to conduct your field survey, you can actually enter them um, right here such that the scenarios that will be shown to you will take into account those obstructions. Let me explain. So let's say we are conducting a survey here in this area and this is where our GPS receiver is kept and so this is north and this is east and this is south and this is west. So we know that there is a huge mountain range right here uh, in the northeast direction uh, as you can see and therefore if we are using an elevation value of 10 in the northeast area then obviously um, you know any satellite at this elevation the signals that are coming from that satellite would be obstructed by this mountain range so what this software permits you to do is to build in these obstruction scenarios in your GPS planning plots. Let's head back and see how we can actually include these obstructions in the sky plot. So we have seen in uh, the previous slide that uh, there is a, a mountain range in the northeastern side. So what we can do is we can just click on this blue ring and we get some uh, handles and we can actually increase the mask angle only in this particular area. If you click on this blue ring one more time uh, you can actually also get a few points that can help you fine-tune defining this particular obstruction. So if you have uh, some obstructions in a particular given site you can actually um, increase the mask angle only in that side such that satellites which are above 10 degrees say for example the original mask angle but still behind the mountain can actually be excluded from the positioning solutions. So this is one wonderful feature of this particular software. Let us just simply clear it for the time being and head back again to our settings page. So we have uh, completed our um, um, the settings page and all we need to do now is to just simply press apply. So we will just do that. Once we are through with that we can head to the satellite library. Uh, you can click on this and what this permits you to do is to choose constellations of uh, uh, GNSS um, uh, from other countries as well. So GPS is from America, GLONASS, Galileo, Baidu. So if your receiver is actually uh, capable of receiving GLONASS you can just check this also. Uh, for the time being I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick with GPS and that's just about it. So I'm seeing all the GPS satellites. So these are the ones that will be shown in the plots here. So let me now show you some of these reports. Uh, some of these reports are more important than others. So let us just head to uh, the ones that are more important. So if I can click on the number of satellites. Uh, this is the format that will be uh, seen in every uh, graph that we are about to see. On the x-axis you have time 
starting at 6 a.m., 8 a.m., 10 a.m. till about 6 p.m. This is the window in which I want to conduct my survey on 24th February 2017. So, and this is the number of satellites. So, you can see that between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m., we have the maximum number of satellites on that particular day. So, this is helpful. Uh, but let us head to one of the most important ones th that make this software really unique and if I can click on this DOPS so what this graph shows you is uh, various DOPS um, ac across the day on 24th um, February and so you can see here value of DOPS from 1 to 5 and it's showing you 5 DOPS the red line is geometrical or G DOP and the orange line is TDOP uh, the green line is position or PDOP, blue vertical VDOP and the brown one is HDOP. So normally we are interested in horizontal positioning or 3D positioning PDOP and these are the ones that we are uh, you know we, we want to keep an eye on. So as you can see if you can follow this HDOP line you can see that this is this line all through the day is below 2 which is supposed to be uh, very very good uh, and excellent so but if you wanted to choose a very uh, you know specific time window then you can see that this brown line is the lowest between 10 and 2 so and very particularly maybe between 11 and 12 so you know you it gives you a fair about of amount of idea as to what time you can actually choose the same is true for the position line the, the green line PDOP and you can recall from the article that uh, values below 4 are excellent for positioning again you can see that while this is you know less than 4 all through the day except maybe for the uh, the last part where it rises a bit even so it is less than 4 that very particularly if you are out between 10 and 2 uh, you have extremely good uh, scenario for PDOP as well as HDOP so this is a really important one helps you plan uh, the uh, the other ones are not really so important so this one just shows you the elevation plots of different satellites at what time during the day you can expect a particular satellite um, the, this one shows you the visibility of various satellites during the day um, uh, this one shows you a sky plot and what this does is you can just simply move it to see which satellites will be overhead at different parts of the day on 24th February 2014 um, this just shows the same thing uh, near your region on a map now these two things are really very very useful and uh, provide you with very unique information uh, but this information is available only for uh, you know a time that is less than the current time it is not available for the future because Trimble maintains models, ionospheric models, and it, it, it updates it every five minutes. So maybe after you have conducted the survey, you can come back and pick up, uh, you know, that date. Uh, let me just pick up a date bef from before, and you can just press apply, and then you can just come here and use INO map. So this map shows you total electron content uh, at different parts of the world, and what is interesting is that you can see that you know at 6 a.m. in the morning the region where I am serving is quite acceptable in terms of ionospheric disturbance but there is some disturbance out here and some disturbance out here total electron content or TEC is the total number of uh, electrons between the GPS satellite and Earth and as you can see the less the better so the interesting part is that as you move this slider you can actually see how the TEC values vary during different parts of the day and I can see that you know around you know uh, around 3 p.m. Uh, there is some disturbance over the area that I am actually um, I had actually conducted my GPS survey so you can take a call but most GPS receivers are really capable of uh, dealing with uh, ionospheric phenomena there's one other thing that you can actually click on that is scintillation and basically the ionosphere has varying densities of electrons uh, when these densities are disturbed by events like solar flares etc the GPS signal that is passing through the ionosphere can get scattered this is called a scintillation you can read a little bit more about uh, scintillation and TEC from this very helpful page so I hope that this video was useful uh, thank you so much for watching